there from here keeping control here driving up to there yeah all that part is flinch and drive is your uchiuki in that kata you need to break it and bring it back to some sort of form where it's come from it is this motion in the kata okay take the flinch in boom boom there you go and from here will i lift this up and will i do this thank you at least you all said now I didn't get a chance to say no, I saw it. Comes in. Boom. There's the strike. Now, I'm not bringing the knee up to strike and kick there. I am walking through that way. Okay? So it's a difference. So as Craig comes in, one, push, two, keeping hold, strike. Yeah? But don't keep hold. He goes that way, he's just going to come back and smash with the next one. Yeah. If none of them shots have been good enough, I'm still putting myself in danger. You keep it in, as Tommy says, you make the brain wobble. Yeah. And that's what you want to do. You want to make it fuzz in the back of the head. So Craig comes in, flinch, take the strike, keep it hold. There you go, keep and strike. Keep in there. If you want to continue after that and take him down, that's fine. Just remember, don't lose him. Don't go into this mode. Because he's a big bear. I just turn me back on him, and now I'm see, and now I'm in trouble. Know yourself, know your enemy. So Craig comes in, bang, bang, take. There you go. He's already there. Good. Do what you want from there. Go on, lads. You okay? So me. Okay, and stop, just one second. Uh, Kieran, because you know what's coming. <laughs> Dave made a good point in class on Friday, he just touched on it. What happens if you come here and you can't see it? You can't pass one, you can't. So you go back to what I say, you deal with what's closest. You drive it in that way. You well, haven't got to do set move, set move in kata for the application, remember that. So Kim's coming in, I've flinched and I've gone bang, there you go. Can't see it. As soon as I do this, I've gone back anyway. Yeah, you need to be taking that kick and forward, but I can't be kicking blind. Well, I'm already here, yeah? I'll try with the fabulous instructor in Wigan to be instructed in his knees. Oh my god, he can't walk the next day. Yeah? Use them. We're only walking, remember. Flinch, tight. I can't see it. Right. That Better make this look. Yeah, you're going to be famous. So, okay. what I've seen so far though is about starting like this again. Get it up, get it up. Get the protection side of things. So for, you are doing this. Yeah. Yeah. So as, as you come, as it comes again, boom. From, from there, don't you go. If it's slow, you need to take the break and say something is pushed. Now all of a sudden, so I'm here. Here. I can't see that's fine. Then I come now down here. What I do is I lift up and I'll lay back. But extend. Think of um, the two back in here. Yeah. So instead of striking, you don't have to do the close fist. Roll. Roll. Yeah. Roll. Yeah. Yeah. Roll. Yeah. Roll. Yeah. Roll. Yeah. Roll. Yeah. Roll. Yeah. Roll. A bit more Dave, you need to get it. See, see the difference is we, we've gone back to blocking. So we're doing, we're doing this. Where we need to take it. We need to take it in that way. Yep. So we're flinching, we're taking everything in. That's better. Move, yes. move. Now stop there. Oh. <laughs> better. That's better. Well done. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I just thought. The beauty of being able to wing it is I can nick other people's inspiration. Just give me. So I was just asked a question. Um, what do we do if we've got somebody that's much bigger than us? Right? So obviously, if you look at Jen, right? You you me, right? So if I've got somebody like Jen, Jen asked me about pain compliance. All right? Everybody in this room will have at some point probably done that technique where you end up pinching the nerve cluster that surround the tricep, right? I'll tell you now, that will not work on most people. Um, it definitely will never give you the response that you want, right? So to demonstrate that, Jen, to take a good grip, I'm already going to be bruised there anyway. I can tell you now that that's causing me a lot of discomfort, right? Quite a lot of pain. Um, and I'll, I'll bruise up after, I'll show you, yeah? Grab that again, right? However, she's not actually stopping me from doing anything. I can talk to you guys fairly normally, fairly rationally. It's a minor irritation, you know? It's like when the kids are playing your with something, it's like, you know, they do your head in and that. Um, and you just swat them away. Not like swatting them away. <laughs> but what I was explaining to these guys is you can use pain in your favour because even if you're not hurting them enough to stop them from trying to elicit violence on you or doing what they're doing, you can use it to manipulate what they're going to do. Alright, so Jen, can I just should be back over there? I'm going to pick on James now. Alright, so we'll go, we'll go back to that double grab. Alright, is it a common regular attack? Nah, not really, but it's a nice training tool and it's useful for, for this demonstration. So, what I'd like you to do is elicit a response from your opponent, okay? So you're all going to be hurting each other a little bit. Take a nice good grip underneath that tricep. So if you feel where the tricep is, you're basically trying to get a handful of that loose skin there. Um, and you're going to claw in. I've trained using swords and stuff, so I tend to grip hardest with these three fingers this way. Um, imagine you're sort of grabbing and pulling. <laughs> what was the first thing he did besides squeal then? He loosed me with the other hand. Now, generally speaking, that's the response I want. Not him to loose, um, per se, but he'll normally loose with that hand because if I've caused him a load of grief with this and he wants to stop me, he's going to try and hit me with that one. All right? Um, the disadvantage I've got in that position is if he throws that punch, because I'm so close, he's not even got a target in. He knows where it's going to go. The advantage I've got is that I know that he knows exactly where that's going to go. So what I want you to do with your partners, get him to take a nice good grip, elicit that bit of pain, and they're going to try and punch in the head. And I want you to close in as tight as you can. You need to be close enough to him. All right? From here, you're hugging around them, utilise the fact that they've committed to that pain, we're then going to start working against the face. If you are comfortable with your partners, apply a bit of pressure, don't dig in or claw in, apply a bit of pressure against the eye to get a bit of a turnaround, okay? If they're not comfortable with anything to do with eye gouges, and some people are, that's fine. You can work by grabbing the face, you can fish up if you want to be really disgusting, pinch across the nose and pull that. Or if you fancy a little bit of um, view show as well, um, you want to work some pressure points, just here, not on the trachea itself, but just inside it there, it's perfectly moulded for your hand, so you can grip that in and you'll get that, okay? With that, follow it down and your partner up. So the whole drill, they grab, elicit a response to the pain, close in, bring it around, and when you get to here, okay, maintain your grip because if they try to do anything, you want to be able to apply a little bit more pressure. If you need to hold them, you can hold them or smash whatever you need to smash after. Does anyone need to see that again? Yes, please, Sensei. Yes, yes, yes. Lots of times. Us. He so, ain't forgot. As, as they have, we know, we know that we're safe from these two weapons. So, Bring this up to cover just in case. Get your paint, bring it in. 
I don't mind if he ends up hitting me at this close because he ain't generating no power. I'll take that knock. Grab whatever you can or whatever you need to grab. Bring all that round and down. If somebody's filming you, you turn them around. Okay, from here, you've got this. Make sure you keep control of this arm as well. Okay. Um, legality. This is an attempted murder. At minimum, you got what, 10 years, I think, something like that, right? That's self defense. <laughs> That's how our law works, alright? Will I propose that you stamp on somebody in a legal manner? No, if nobody's filming you, and it's the only way you can put them down. Alright? So, have a go. I did, I did. I put, I put it down when you said yes, I put it down. Put your partners and put that together, alright? Have a word. <laughs> Grabbing down on the floor. Yeah, all you got is step. Get a lot of <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good right? So if you're here like that, create a pinch point and then go for that. <laughs> Sorry, Jen. So, most, most, if you look for that tendon that's directly sitting normally over the vein, so where you see that vein there, yeah? That's the point at which you're going to press into. If you've got somebody who's really bony, they're probably not going to feel it. So what you start to do then is pull that tendon and ligature across. Yeah, that's not, that's not like I say, there's some of them. Some people like jump on the spot. Some people, you go, don't bother. But is that because I've got small bits? Maybe. And yeah. what you've got to take into account is not everybody's built exactly the same. Yeah, that'll be a good one. So you, you've got to work it, you've got to work around your opponent. I wouldn't use a pressure point as a break point, but the wrist bend, so working against that bend in to hit is something that you can do, you know. Like I say, classroom learning this one. I, I, I want people to mm. You know when you get it because your fingers like wobbles off the muscle running. <laughs> These ones are the worst. The worst ones are here. Oh, no. Anywhere around that point. <laughs> Go in and down, are you? <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, primarily because um, it's something that I've done for years, but also um, they're an often neglected tool. So in karate especially, um, the first time you ever taught a kick um, may get it. The first thing you're told to do is usually do it at the Chudani, so that minimum of waist height and all that kind of stuff. The reality is if you're going to do any kicks, um, in a fighting scenario, they're always going to be low, um, unless you're really lucky and you've got somebody really stupid. Um, so one of the things you want to be able to look at is potentially utilising the kicks that you'll do naturally, um, but in a combative sense. So um, to refer back to what you all did earlier with flinch and stuff like that, you can utilise your basic kicks from a flinch as well, you just need to pick the targets you're going to hit. So I'm not going to go through all the intricacies of a flinch, I'm actually going to go right back to basics and we're going to work from using a Mawashiyuki or Toraguchi, whichever you call it. So your partner will try and grab your shoulder, I'll go with that one mate so they can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to move that out the way and round, okay? And I'm doing this on purpose really big and out the way because these are longer than these. I don't want to utilise these for this drill. As soon as I've got that arm out the way, I'm going to throw Geda Mawashi Geri here, okay? Where I'm aiming for is just above his knee, okay? Depending on the conditioning of your feet, I've got really hard feet, you like a lump on the top, so I have a tendency to keep using the bridge of my foot. It is a terrible habit, and most people shouldn't do it. If you can, you want to hit him with the shin instead, that way, get the ridge of that shin banging in, because you're barely going to feel that, okay? So the whole drill, as they come in, we move that out of the way, drive them from there, okay? I'm doing it lazy on purpose as well, so you've not got to cock to drive it in. All you've got to do is bring the hips round. It's almost like you're doing a lazy step as you come over like a low, low wall or upper gutter. Yeah, it's that kind of motion. Um, and depending on how you want to hurt your opponent or the orientation of their leg, you're either going to go straight to the or you can come slightly up and come down, which gives you that kind of reaction. So the drill, they come in, get that out of the way. Oh, it's a bit right. If they've stepped forward with that leg, you want to come up and drop it on there, okay? Because, just put that leg there, mate. This is wedged into the floor, so if I put pressure down on that, it's either going to bend back that way or that far dedicated forward that all of that shock's going in there because it's got nowhere else for the energy to go, it's stuck into the floor. If not, and the leg's back, so if it's coming the other way, there you go. If that leg's back, just walk through it. As you were shown earlier, just walk through it. Make it a lazy step as you go in. What you do after that, your hands on that, I'll leave it to you guys. If you want to take down, um, to quote Simon Oliver, um, uh, close that close quarter, take down and completion. If you want to follow through with that, have a go for it. But start with your evasion, the kick allows you to enter, close quarter, take down completion, up to you. Everyone Aye. okay with that? Yes. Aye. Have a go.
with your partner, up to a count of 15, right? Um, I think Sensei John's still on, he's in about five. Um, five. I like 15, because that moment guarantees everybody it's a five. Yeah, um, me, me and Ian Edwards Sensei struggled, I think we did the 15. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just... <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Imagine that you're counting very slow, right? So you know when you're trying to teach children to count and you're like, one, two, I want you to count through that with your partner. So, We'll square off, nice and basic. Partner will open up with our move, yeah, and we go one, and that's his speed. And his goal is to make contact and fully complete that through the target he's aiming for. So the rule is, whatever strike you try and do or lock you try and do, you try to complete the motion and pass through your opponent. So never stop. Always carry on all the way so that you force a change in posture. Okay? Right. So if he goes in for one and he gets to there, he's made his movement. I've now got a count to do something else from there. But you've only got one count. So what that means is you can't do one, two, three, four as a single count. Right? So from this position, my next count might be two. And I've stepped it here. He's now got to figure out a way to realign. So going back to that Uda principle, he's now got to observe what I've just done. He's got to orientate himself for what he needs to do, decide and then ask on what he's going to do. So that would be three. Yeah? If you end up in a position where you get completely stuck, rewind it a step. Okay? So rewind that a step, mate. Rewind it one step to wherever you were. Okay? From there, I'll ask you to do something different so we can keep the flow going. So, try something completely different. There we go. So, now he's worked through with that posture. That would be four, yeah? From there, that would be five. And so on. Six, yeah? And you're going to work step by step until you get to a count of 15. If you need to rewind at any point, rewind. You're working with your partner. Um, you can work as light or as heavy as you want. Um, it is entirely up to you and your partner. I'll leave it to you guys. Okay? Um, just be aware that half the time you end up on the ground. Um, so just make sure you're not rolling into each other. Please make sure your heads are covered in you. No one has clashed it. It's a pain in your arse to deal with. Um, so yeah, step by step. Up to a count of 15. Okay? Explore the movement. The stuff that we've covered today, so breaking posture using kicks, you can employ that slow, you can employ that slow. Using pressure point areas for compliance or posture breaking, try and use that as well. Is it guaranteed to in violent combat? No, not always. Um, but it's a fantastic learning tool. Um, so utilise it as just a learning tool for today. Everybody okay with that? Or does anyone need to do the demonstration? It's a nice simple exercise, so we've got about 10 minutes. Go for it. Cheers, mate. So you've not fully finished that movement off. He's now going to count to his way around. The hard part's having to rewind the step because yeah. you go, what did I just do? <laughs> Yeah. 
disorientating that you can go in and finish what you can go. Okay, so it's the only double strike or blow because when he attacks me and I'm here, my hands are already there. It makes sense. And because, yeah, Nick, sorry. If you use this, not, don't use it as a push. If you look at this, if you look at this, just watch this. His head's already gone between power, speed, and aggression. That will knock someone out. So when Nick comes at me, I'm not going to think about Nick. When he attacks me, well, no, just just come in from anything. Just come, and I'm here. That, sorry, Nick, he's gone. I'll follow him through and I'll smash him until he's gone. I'll go because if I have to step, if he attacks me, and I have to step, do some kind of block into this. My cheeks hanging off. And I'm waiting for an ambulance. Your flinch reaction is when a wall falls on you, and you're walking down the road, and you look. And you do that, you don't drop into a stance and do something. At long range, we can use stance and techniques. At close range, it's not going to happen. So I'm here. Anything, grab anything. I'm here. Again, I'm looking at the head. There. And then you can some sort of like Christian symbol is like it's, it's actually there for a very valid reason um, and very useful. So that's the Zerkow. Third one is the Shield Hell. So uh, this is this is pretty much like the Zerkow but vertical. Okay? So the good thing about this one is if the strike starts to come down lower, so it becomes more horizontal, so if he doesn't have to aim at a low target, he can aim here. I can simply do, a, do, a, do my shield how defend and strike vertically into his shoulder or into his head. If I'm really good, I can even step into, into the strike. But um, that, this is really good because it breaks the mechanic. Yeah, it kind of breaks the, the, the whole decent body mechanic of his strike is kind of messed up now. And I've got him in the side of the head. Yeah, so that's your shield how. There's also the crimp power. This is, this is one where you're not necessarily defending the sword, depending on how you do it. So with this one, I'm gonna go for the wrist strike. So as he comes in, I'm just gonna to move to the side. And I've still got this cross, this, I've got this cross hand thing going on. I'm still holding the sword. So it's moving this way, so it's almost cutting sideways. Yeah, and I'm going in for that. And then the last strike is the shuttle how. And this is designed for anything that's coming in um, at a lower target to straight. And, and this is just to give you a geometric advantage. Okay, so if, if you see that he's coming in for a lower strike, then you can just overreach him. Okay. Kind of a balls out thing to do, like leaving yourself open, but it works. Yeah. And it can, if, if you do it like that, so you actually thrust in at the same time to the throat, then you're kind of safe, okay? So, this is only the first stage of the cut. Then, what we, what can, what we then get onto pretty quickly in the our system is what you do if somebody knows what they're doing. So obviously, he's teaching this to his students, and then his students are going, oh yeah, what if I do that as well? Yeah, and this is where the beauty of it comes in. So, uh, if I strike, if, well I say Jack strikes to me, but this time he's going to strike with the Zornhau, yeah, because he, he wants to remain covered as well. So if he strikes with the Zornhau, I strike with the Zornhau, then all, if he's, if he's being nice like that, yeah, <laughs> if he actually does it, then all of a sudden we're ended up in what we call a bind, yeah, and then, and then we can look at what we do next. So when we get to a bind, then we're going to, then we're going to start to look at, well, is he, is he hard or soft in the bind? Five principles that Nick Snell talks about. Three to do with timing, before, immediately, and after. And two to do with, the, with strength, strong or weak, okay? If Jack's strong in the bind, then I'm gonna come around the other side, yeah? And I can do this in a, in a number of ways. So let's get to that bind again. Yeah, we're here. And if, if, he's, if, I, if I can do it really quickly, I'll just pull back and cut, yeah? Or if he's pushing through, go and push through to me. Up to you. Yeah, to me. Sorry. Yeah, not the sword. Go on, yeah. Yeah. I might come to the side and do a larger cut going offline. Yeah, which yeah, I'm sure loads of you will be familiar with. Yeah. If he comes to me, if he comes to me and I cut to him, and he's weak, 
then I can simply push through and, and cut it. Yeah? If he pushes through to me, and, he, and we end up sort of going, going a bit towards each other because neither of us really want to give, give ground, then this is where we can transition into one of the other strikes, the Zerkow. So I'm in here. Yeah? But he's got a good centre line. He's probably going to do something about that quite easily. Yeah. So the beauty of the Zerkow, another thing that's really good about it, is because it just depends on this, you can angle it really easily and keep yourself covered. Yeah. So if we go to here, if we get to here, and he feels me go weak, so he knows I'm going to come around here, then I can actually cut at a lower target and still remain covered here. So if he does something, then I can, I can still bring my sword up, and then maybe from there I go to a shear hell, or I can go to a disarm, go to a half sword, and thrust him. Now, you've hit the point where my cushion is the biggest. I want to hit you there because that's where I'm going to be strong with you. So you want to step either away from me, which means you've lost your initiative, but you're alive. Or they can step into me so that I've lost power, but you've not lost your initiative. So if I cut into the accident, you step forward in the exact same mechanic, but stepping around in my circle. My, my so you're basically you. stopping before you've got your swing. Yeah. And now if I start to drop it to go for your midsection, you drop it to plow. Drop it to plow. Punish it. Um, so we're here at the uh, Kalsa Academy for the Aiki Budo Alliance's Martial Arts Friendship Seminar. We've got the, the key sponsor for the event, Dr. John Zhu Zhang, uh, with us today. So, Dr. John, tell us a bit about yourself and uh, what it is you do. So uh, I've been a martial artist for 29 years. I've trained in different disciplines from Kung Fu, Karate, Aikido, Jiu-Jitsu, uh, Hapkido, Arnis, and Salat. Those are my main mixes, but um, uh, these days I work as a, um, an actor. I was a stunt performer for a while, um, worked on various films such as Marvel Eternals, The Gentleman, 
uh, Fast and Furious, and I've just come back from LA. Uh, I spent four months there working on a Michelle Yeoh uh, project, which is a uh, Netflix production called The Brother's Son, which will be out next year. Wow, so um, you've, you've obviously met Michelle Yeoh then. Um, yes. I'm, I'm a massive <laughs> fan of like old school martial arts yeah. cinema, so what was that like? That's got to have been an experience. So she has been a staple in my childhood growing up because I watched all her films, you know, and so to actually have scenes with her and actually talk to her and get to hang out with her as well, it's phenomenal. She is lovely and also very witty. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine. So um, you've obviously made that transition oh. from stunt performer mm -hmm. to um, now professional actor. How did you find that transition? Because I know a lot of people struggle to, to bridge that gap yes. in that kind of profession. So... Um, Personally, I feel uh, there is a shelf life to stunt work. Um, <laughs> um, so I think it's um, acting is what I always wanted to do. Stunt work was how I wanted to get there first. So I wanted to progress in stunts first because I have a martial arts background and it made sense to do that. So now, um, you know, I, I, I involved myself in a lot of independent films as well and then slowly just built up a repertoire for, for acting. So uh, now these days uh, I get to uh, be an actor and do my own fight scenes and for the most part do my own stunts, um, which aren't too demanding at the moment. <laughs> at the moment. At the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so do you, do you still um, heavily remain active in your martial arts training and that as well? Does that assist with your stunt work or does the work you do impact on your martial arts training at all? So uh, martial arts splits into three main categories. You've got performance, health and fighting. At one point in our careers, we will do all three. Um, so these days, I fight less. However, uh, you know, I, I don't fight at all now, which is which is a good thing. Uh, so I keep healthy, but also um, I enjoy, um, you know, being able to perform with it as well. So uh, it has a lot of stretching, but <laughs> it's a lot more stretching, a lot more rehab as well. Especially as if you do a sequence in a film, um, they'll say, "Okay, reset. Let's go again. Reset. Let's go again." So it can be quite exhausting. So you need to make sure that your endurance is good. So when you're training, when you're on, not on set and you're training, you have to make sure that you are in very good condition. You know how to take care of any injuries that you have. Um, in terms of, say, my marsh, my personal martial arts training, I still train every day. Um, okay. I think, um, especially for self-defense purposes, should any situations ever happen, um, tend to avoid most situations now which is the, which is a good thing anybody who's got half a brain will <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> yeah. but i always think it's important to train when you don't want to so that you can fight when you have to and i fantastic yeah. <laughs> thank <Yeah>. you <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the best way to put it thank i can't you, argue you. with that at all <laughs> so yeah um just uh what what sort of got you involved with the with the martial arts friendship seminars what what sort of attracted you to this whole kind of event so nick who is the uh head of the iq budo alliance which now boasts i believe over fifteen thousand members on facebook um yeah they're, they're um, growing quite well absolutely yeah. um, and that's worldwide i think in the uk that we got loads and loads and loads of them members uh nick got in touch with me during the first lockdown because he wanted to do some um seminars with me i thought yeah sure let's do that and then, you know, we talked more and everything. And then after that, it was like, okay, let's actually put, put on a show together. You know, let's actually do something together. Um, and Nick is an amazing organizer. Um, and, you know, I thought, hey, you know, this is, this is great. I, I want to be a part of this. And especially as the people that we brought in today um, and also previous events have just been wonderful martial arts instructors. They're, they're not just wonderful, you know, fantastic martial artists, they're wonderful people as well. And, and as such, they're amazing instructors. You know, it's like, that's really, really important that you're a good person, you're very skilled, and you're good at being able to translate those skills when you're teaching to, to students of all walks of life. So, you know, no egos, no, there's no, none of that. And it's, it's wonderful to be in that environment. So um, certainly, you know, I'm very proud to be sponsoring this event and more events to come. And I'd love to have you back again. <laughs> oh, I'll absolutely be back again. So any sort of final parting words for, for anybody out there? Yeah, keep training. And I hope to see you at one of these events. <laughs> John, any thank chance, you very any much chance for to share it from Mushashugio? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. How do you say it? Mushashugio? Mushashugio is a Musha warrior's Studio. pilgrimage. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Huge out of Mushashugio Studios. You guys are fantastic. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers again. <laughs>